Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, I just got back from the garden center. I originally went out there because um, I needed to get a heat mat for uh, for some carnivorous seeds. I'm trying to grow some Nepenthes uh, seeds, pitcher plants, and I haven't had much luck with uh, with germination yet. Um, and I was thinking that it was probably to do with my temperatures are a little bit too low in the basement. So uh, my my mission was to to go out there and, and get a heat mat, but uh, unfortunately I get sidetracked as always and I'm in this orchid mood right now and uh, I found some orchids on a discount so I thought, hey, why not? Why not give it a try? So I ended up buying this um, quite lovely uh, Oncidium orchid. It's really, really pretty. It's, uh, I don't know what it originally was, probably uh, $25, but it was marked down to $9.99 so I'll give that a try. I'll do another video and just a, a after this one, and and we'll do a uh, uh, how to water uh, on city orchid because this one here, the pseudobulb, as you can see, is all it's all shriveled up, and that tells you that its uh, its water storage is uh, is getting low, and it needs to get watered for sure. So anyway, we'll deal with that in another video. Just wanted to share that with you. Stick it off to the side. You guys can uh, can look at those beautiful flowers. Another one that was on sale was uh, a lady slipper orchid. Um, it had a flower spike, but the the flower had died, uh, probably to do with a watering related issue. Um, the plant itself came in a pot originally thirty four ninety nine. I got it for ten dollars. Um, generally, with with uh, slipper orchids, uh, after the flower spike. Uh, dies, it will put out uh, babies, little little offsets, and then those ones will produce the flowers. So, so like the Oncidium, um, every bulb that it's pr it produces after it flowers will be the next flower producer, um, and and so on. So the older bulbs will know it'll feed the plant, but it won't it won't produce any flowers again. So that's like this one. So it these these leaves might last another couple of years. But, uh, but chances are um, the new growth will come and take its place and, and this one might, uh, might pass on. So I saw this, it was, like I said, it was tipped out of its pod and it was on sale for $10. But the reason why I bought it, and this might be just a root, but I don't know whether you can see here, there's a little nubbin just at the base here by my finger. And uh, I thought that that might be where some new growth is going to come out. Might be wishful thinking, but uh, hey, for ten dollars I'll give it a try. It's better than playing, paying full price. So anyway, I've had... Um, I took it completely out of its pot. It pretty well was anyway. Uh, I don't see any any real bad roots in here. They're not looking the greatest, but actually this one here is is pretty well... Let me just go get some scissors. Sorry for this, guys. Go and this these scissors are freshly washed. I'm doing a lot of plant things recently, and this is a, a yucky root. Uh, all in all, the uh, the root system doesn't look too bad. It's not very big, but that's all right. So I've had this soaking in some water, just just because I thought maybe maybe just maybe. Um, it, it uh, was dried out too much. Um, so I'm just trying to rehydrate the plant. So I've had it in there for about five minutes, maybe ten. And I'm going to set the plant off to the side. Uh, you want to use a finer orchid bark. Um, the, the plant came with, uh, with a larger chunk of um, a fir bark. Uh, and then I, I'm just going to reuse the old soil. There's, there's no uh, there's no need for me to, to get more. Obviously it was potted up uh, rather recently. Um, and I just added some sphagnum moss in here because uh, paphiopetalums or lady slipper orchids uh, don't really like to dry out. They like to stay constantly moist, not wet, they don't like to be soggy, 
but they, they like to constantly have moisture at the root system, um, which is nice to, to keep in mind. Also, a little bit of culture for, uh, for the slipper orchid. Slipper orchids are, are low light varieties, so if you have um, African violets and they're, they're thriving, give, give um, them the slipper orchid a try because they like the same uh, light situation. They don't like direct sunlight. They like a bright location, but not a not like a full sun uh, hot exposure. So uh, yeah, give them a try if you see them. I know that they're really expensive, uh, but uh, if you can get them on sale like this, if you have the patience, why not? Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put some of the soil in the the bottom of the pot. They say that, that plastic pots are, are better for Paphiopetalums because, because they, uh, they like to stay moist. If you, if you did it in a clay pot like you would do, normally do with other orchids, um, it'll dry out too quickly. And if you want to water every two or three days, then that's fantastic. Uh, go with the clay. But uh, I, as you have probably come to realize, do not water all that often once, twice, maybe three times a week if I'm feeling the mood. So I just, I popped in some soil into the bottom, or the bark into the bottom, and now I'm just, uh, I put the, the root system in there, and now I'm just filling in around the root system, propping it in with, uh, with the new soil, and sphagnum moss mix that's been sitting in this moisture For a little while. I didn't put any fertilizer in this uh, water to be absorbed, not this time. Um, I could have, but I, I didn't. And if you did, uh, you would use like a, a quarter strength fertilizer. Okay. And just like every other orchid, when you're when you're repotting it, I don't know whether you can see here, but I'll get the uh, get a little bit of a close up. I haven't, I haven't brought the soil level up past the crown of the plant. With a lot of orchids, if not all of orchids, um, you don't want to have the crown submerged under the soil level. Um, orchids tend to get uh, rot uh, quite easily, so you want to avoid that scenario by just uh, keeping the uh, the crown of the plant just above the uh, the soil level adding a couple more larger rocks in here rocks uh, wood chips so this will be fantastic I'm going to I won't need to water this now I'll water it uh, I'll check it I'm gonna look for the sphagnum moss to get a little bit dry and then in th when that happens then I will uh, I will water it it'll probably be um, three four days maybe a week before I need to water it again and I like to put them in a in a nice uh, pretty container with uh, with good air movement around there and I'll also use this to water it. I will water the top the the container will fill up with water and uh, then I will let it sit for about five ten minutes take the plant out, let it drain thoroughly and then dump out the remaining water. It's as easy as that uh, but I will have instructional videos on watering just in case you you don't quite understand but this is uh, my new little Paphiopetalum uh, or uh, Lady Slipper Orchid. Uh, I don't know what color it is. I'm going to assume that it's going to be a really light color, uh, possibly a white or a white and pink, uh, just because of the color of the leaves. Uh, the lighter the leaf, the lighter the color of the flower, generally. If it was a darker modeling on this leaf, it would, uh, it would be more on the purple side. But uh, as you can see, the uh, the modeling of the leaf is it, it looks to me like it's going to be a white plant so anyway hope you enjoyed this video I will uh, get up to uh, doing some uh, some orchid blogs soon uh, so stay tuned happy growing everyone